A very good evening and welcome again at our talk show today at RoboCup. Here we are again, uh, there's uh, three of us instead of four yesterday. And well, we'll talk about what happened today at the RoboCup and what will happen tomorrow. Now, all the things that happened today were of course filmed and we have a small video compilation for you to watch. This is what happened today at RoboCup 2013. We zijn hartstikke enthousiast um, en het is ook nog heel erg leerzaam. with Guy and Jurgen in a moment, but we'd like to start with the at-home league. At home, uh, these are robots that uh, in the future uh, will help us in our home with daily tasks, with cleaning up and with serving us drinks and things like that. Joining us is uh, Loy. You are at uh, the Tech United at-home team. Yes, I am. Um, so uh, the at-home team is, of course, uh, a competition for service robots. Um, yeah, it was, it's a really exciting uh, game and it really shows the future of, of robotics, actually. Yes, those are the ones that can be, can be used very soon, I think, in, in, our, in our daily lives. How many years until we have a robot in our home? Um, well, it depends on, mostly on who you ask. Uh, according to René van der Molenkoft, it's about um, maybe t 10 years or 15 years, but uh, it also depends really on what you want a robot uh, to do. Like, mm -hmm. There are already um, cleaning robots around, um, but they, uh, they swipe the floor, for example, which is yeah. a relatively easy task. Yeah, yeah. Good. So, uh, at Home League consists of different uh, challenges, uh, different household tasks that this robot has to fulfill. I think today we saw one of the nicest challenges to watch. It's the Follow Me Challenge. How does it work? Uh, the Follow Me Challenge is, um, yeah, the robot has to, to follow a person uh, around. Um, and what happens is that... Um, uh, several people stand in the way, and th the robot has to still follow uh, the right person. Okay. Uh, which is really hard for a robot, because, um, for example, our robot, Amigo, uses a, a laser scanner, and all he has to, to track his, uh, his operator is just a scan of the torso. Um, hmm. And if there's multiple, then it's really hard to, to, keep, to distinguish between them. And he recognizes this specific torso? And he can, he can see which one is the person he's following, and which torso belongs to other people? Uh, now, what he actually does is he keeps track of where uh, his operator was. And okay. if there's another person uh, jumps in, then the position of his operator will, um, if, if, if he messes up, uh, that will mean that uh, the position of the operator jumps up really fast, which is okay. really improbable. Yeah. Um, so what he does is um, it, it, it does some sort of tracking on that. Mm -hmm. So he can make real jumps. It keeps okay. uh, some velocity model. Do, uh, do, do all teams use the same kind of tracking mechanism or is there a, a, a very big difference between teams uh, and how they track uh, the, the people? Uh, it's actually very different. A lot of teams use a, a, a Kinect scanner just with, with a real body tracker. Um, this is the same Kinect that people use when they're playing uh, Xbox. Yes, the, the very <laughs> same Kinect, yes. Yeah. Um, may, some people may actually know this, but uh, the Kinect was uh, hacked really soon after mm -hmm. it was released. Yeah. Um, and then all of robotics uh, jumped, uh, jumped on, the, on the Kinect to, to get them. And yeah. I think every robot has a Kinect or a similar sensor. Mm -hmm. Good, let's uh, look at the images. Uh, we, we have a bit of film uh, uh, on the, well, we were filming during the Follow Me competition. There we see the referee. He's giving the command to the robot. So the robot has to recognize the voice of the referee also, right? Does the, does the robot recognize the voice of the referee? Uh, yes, the, the robot has to uh, uh, get the command to, uh, to continue. Uh, but he has to re recognize, uh, not, not the voice, but the command. 
uh, which is really difficult in a, in a noisy environment, especially with a lot of people around. Now we see him following. He's completely independent now. There's no human, no human controlling this robot. He's uh, working independently. And now somebody is going to walk between the robot and the person he's following. Uh, yes, indeed. So um, Amigo knows that um, the person he's following is far, far, uh, quite far away, uh, about two meters or something. Um, and somebody new jumps in at one meter, so that's a really big jump in position. Uh, so Amigo knows that um, that such a big shift would be is, is very unlikely. So he keeps track of, um, keeps a, remembers where the person was before. Also, this is a challenge that is played outside the arena. So you're really among the crowd when you're playing this challenge. Uh, yeah, we were f f uh, really among the crowd. Um, uh, it was really cool. A couple of weeks ago, we had a, a, a demo in, um, in the center of Eindhoven, and we actually um, went to a shopping mall. So we gave uh, okay. Amigo a, a little uh, shopping purse uh, and drove to, uh, to, a, to a, through a store. Oh. So here we see um, uh, the, the operator, the referee enters an elevator. Normally he had to follow, but he didn't. So the challenge finished there for you. Yes, indeed. Uh, what happened was that the, uh, the operator took a really sharp corner into the elevator. Um, um, and because Amigo dr tries to drive a straight line between himself and the operator, uh, well, then the corner uh, of, the, of the elevator was in the way, so he couldn't follow anymore. Okay, I think uh, that's all for the, for the images, because the rest is just Amigo standing still. So. Good. Um, the winning team of this challenge was a Thai team. I think it's Team Scuba. Uh, something like that, yes. Yes, so they, uh, the robot managed, uh, with this team, the robot managed to get into the elevator and then the challenge was that the robot had to exit the elevator first, yes. then follow the referee again, but then the referee was walking around a wall of several people. Yes, indeed. Um, well, the, the, the hard thing is that the, the robot completely loses uh, track of the, of the operator. Mm -hmm. So it has to, f to find, okay, this is a group of people and uh, probably my operator is somewhere around it. But he has to look for the operator, yeah. uh, which is really hard because there could be several people in there. He, he, yeah. If you remember the, the previous position, uh, that's all lost now. Yeah, that's where the Thai team stopped also. This was the, the end for uh, even, even for, for the winning team. How did it go in the shopping mall? You really took a robot into a shopping mall, people around there were unaware of the fact of what you were doing and suddenly there was a robot running around in a Dutch shop shopping mall. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, um, yeah, some people were just, whoa, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was really fun to see actually. Um, and we, yeah, d uh, because we were in a shopping mall, even uh, put a little uh, candy bar in, in his purse um, <laughs> just, to just to make it real. It was, yeah, it was really cool. I uh, we forgot to pay on the way up, but I j just, bro <laughs> just brought it back. So it's a real shopping robot. Robots for free. Good. Um, tomorrow at the At Home League, we have the cleanup event. So this is actually, this is actually where, where the robot enters a room. Uh, there's a bit of garbage laying around and he has to localize it. How does it work exactly? Um, well, for the, for the cleanup challenge, the, the robot has... Um, um, the operator says which room uh, the robot should clean. So, for example, the kitchen, the living room, or a bedroom. Um, and for each room, there's a couple of predefined positions, such as uh, uh, tables with a few spots where, um, where something may, may be positioned. The robot has to look there and see if, hey, this is a, a, a glass or something, uh, and glasses should go to, to the dishwasher, for example. Okay. Um, or, for example, there's a, a can of Coke, and Amigo has to know that um, cans of uh, uh, Coke cans or empty cans should go to the trash bin, for example. I see. So it's not, it's not all trash bin. It's not everything has to be thrown away. No. Different objects have different destinations. Yes, exactly. And that's what uh, usually makes the challenge uh, so hard. Because if you uh, misrecognize some object, mm -hmm. they have to uh, place it s somewhere different. But if you don't place it at the right, uh, right position, you don't get any points. I see. And also if you drop the object, of course, then, then no points again. Uh, the uh, cleaning up uh, event tomorrow at uh, 2 o'clock Central European time. I, we don't know if we can have a live stream of this event, but of course everybody who is in the neighborhood just come here. The Queen will visit us, I think, from 12 to 2 or something in that vicinity. So the clean up event will start right after the Queen has left. So when she leaves anything behind, like an empty can or something, then the robots can clean up then after. We can clean up everything, of course. <laughs> yes, excellent. <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> We're looking forward uh, to this. Good, football time, again. Um, there was a lot going on in the football leagues. What I noticed personally was the fact that um, there was more cheering today. 
both the teams and the audience were really cheering today. There was uh, euphoria when goals were scored and uh, more emotion on the field, which is what we like to see. And let's start with the, the middle-sized league. What happened in the middle-sized league, uh, Guy? Well, today we, we started with the group uh, phase. We had two groups. And uh, as you said, it was a lot more serious because uh, yeah, if you make a mistake today, you, uh, you, you have the chance to, uh, to be eliminated of the tournament. So uh, yeah, we had two groups. Uh, both uh, groups uh, contained five teams. Uh, group A consisted of the teams um, Tech United, Water, Carpenoctem, Hibikino and Isoporto. Water is a Chinese team, Carpenoctem is German and Hibikino is Japanese, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and the Isoporto team is Portuguese. Okay. So uh, in this group, uh, Tech United and the Water team were, uh, I, I think, were the most uh, likely to uh, exit this, uh, this group to make it through to the next round, Yes. Uh, which they did, so no surprises there. And then uh, we had three teams left. I think they are very equal and they really had to fight to, uh, to make sure they, they went through. Uh, German team really surprised me there. Their defense was very strong, had some hardware problems. Uh, that's why they uh, gave away too many points, I, I think. But uh, they made it uh, through uh, in, the, in the third place in the group. And mm -hmm. I think that they did very well. Uh, the, the team uh, Hibikino and Isoporto had a lot of problems today. And because uh, uh, Isoporto forfeited the last match against Hibikino, before Hibikino had a chance to forfeit, Hibikino is through to tomorrow. I uh, see. It's a nice chance for them to, uh, to try and uh, do better. So, so Isoporto, is potential. So. the Portuguese team is uh, the one uh, team that's eliminated in Group A. Is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, for Group B, we had uh, Nubot, uh, Bitak, uh, Kambada, MRL and Sokrov. MRL so is the, the famous team from Iran. Exactly, Strong yeah. Strong team from Iran. And, and Kambada is the very tactical team. Yeah, from the Portuguese, Portuguese uh, yes. team that uh, they, they were they were world champion a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. very technically very strong, and they actually came with a totally new designed robot. So mm -hmm. uh, I expected a lot from them. The Iranian team, second uh, of the world at the moment, expected a lot of them too, and uh, they uh, just managed to get out of the group in uh, third and fourth place. So two favorites so, uh, in trouble in Group B. Yeah, exactly. So okay. the outsider uh, Bitak, a relatively new team, we haven't seen them in a couple of years. They uh, managed to, uh, to win uh, some uh, really exciting games, which gave them a second place. But the new bot surprised me the most. They won a lot. They played some really, really strong matches. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, so I didn't really see that coming. They came from, uh, I think, uh, an average team to suddenly, here we are, just uh, try and beat us. So uh, they're first through uh, in the group. What country is a new bot from? Uh, you ask a very good question. I think Newport <laughs> is from China as well. Oh, I see. Strong Chinese teams there. Yeah. So we have a Group A and a Group B. Um, in Group A, well, of course, we, we, might, we might be a bit patriotic here in Holland, but it's almost objective. The Dutch team is outstanding. The Tech United team is very, very good. Do, do you think that this, um, the teams from Group B that they didn't play yet are a real challenge, a real competition for the Dutch team Tech United? Well, uh, looking uh, ba based on today, I think that uh, all teams started really rough uh, this morning, except for the Tech United team. They really had, some, uh, had a solid game ready, and uh, all the other teams really started getting better during the day. And the last uh, match that, that were played, so Tech United versus Water, and on the other field, MRL versus Kambada, that's actually the four teams that I think have the most chance of getting through to the finals. They played the last two games and they both played sublimely. So okay. during the day, they really, really got better. And I think that um, Tech United made a great start, but uh, they have to really keep up with the other teams because they are climbing uh, that ladder very oh, fast. The other ones are growing in the tournament, so to speak. Yes. Yeah, and uh, you, you have to imagine that uh, Tech United, uh, well, they brought their robots from Eindhoven to Eindhoven. Yeah. But, uh, Water brought their robots from China to Eindhoven. That yes. means disassembly, reassembly, fine-tuning. More debugging. So, yeah, yeah. They just have that extra day. They need that extra day to, to get uh, in that uh, top, uh, top form. OK, we've got some images ready of that final and very beautiful game, Tech United against Water. So Holland, China, in a way, one of the Chinese uh, teams. And uh, let's look at it, and you can uh, comment. So uh, let's uh, tell us uh, what happens. Yeah, we made a, a short uh, compilation video. So at the start of the game, uh, both teams were very strong, all, also both uh, very robust. What's, uh, what color is the Dutch team here? Dutch team is playing with, uh, with the red uh, numbers and the uh, uh, Chinese team, Water, is playing with the blue numbers. And this is the first goal by, uh, by Tech United. 
And uh, what surprised me most here that they really uh, found a nice way to turn around uh, the defense. So this is the offense of, uh, of the Chinese team. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, the position of the robot is not that good. But they are really strong uh, when they get in front of the goal and they, uh, they manage to shoot. They almost always uh, pass the goalie. So that was a very tense moment. I think that was the biggest shot they had at a goal. So uh, a little bit further in the match, we see that uh, Tech United is trying to get uh, in scoring position. But yeah, somehow uh, the player doesn't shoot immediately and he tries to outthink the, the goalie. Yeah, well, you can't outthink a, a goalie in robot soccer, so <laughs> he just fires it uh, at the goalie. Same thing uh, happened uh, at the other side. If, uh, Jeff, uh, if the Chinese team uh, managed uh, to score, then uh, the, the goalie was in the way. So uh, there's also uh, yeah, a point uh, in the game where, where the Warriors should have scored, but uh, they, they didn't because the goalie uh, did very good work. Okay. Second half. So the uh, first half was very exciting, very high pace. Second half was a little less. I think teams both toned down to, to try to uh, yeah, find that, uh, that, that, that special move. Chinese team said uh, they just wanted to get lucky. But, uh, and there's a second goal. Yeah, and the, the end result was 3-0, uh, to zero, I think. Yeah. Yes, and a cheering crowd, because especially at the Dutch games, we have a lot of attention uh, from the crowd. One last highlight, one special thing that we saw in the middle-sized league today was two robots on fire. <laughs> well, uh, we had an, uh, a little uh, emergency. Uh, during the, the match, uh, uh, Water versus TV Kino, the uh, robot from, uh, from uh, Water, Suddenly, uh, one of its accu's uh, power supply just got fire. So I don't know exactly what happened. Can be a short out or just overheating. We have uh, uh, images uh, of this happening. Yeah, you, there you we have were it. there, right? So yeah, bit of panic, bit of smoke at the side of the of the screen. There is the accu, the battery that was on fire, already taken out of the robot. So a small irony on uh, the RoboCup: the water team was on fire. And then we had another robot that was smoking. Yeah, one of the, the German uh, robots uh, from Carpen Noctum. I think it was uh, just uh, a little uh, short, uh, short out, and one of the, the, the hoods uh, around the robot uh, caught fire, so it started uh, burning. But Have they fixed that uh, really quickly by just uh, ripping out all the cables, <laughs> which was another solution of putting by, out a fire. By yeah. de-gutting their, their football yeah, player. Yeah, basically, that's what they did, yeah. Have you seen this before in mid-sized leagues, uh, robots catching fire? In the past, it did really. Uh, yes. It was uh, always accidents, but it uh, always went wrong, uh, went wrong uh, sometimes. Oh, I see. But uh, yeah, it's okay. fun to see. It's part of the game. <laughs> it's like Formula One crashes. I you think know. the last uh, couple of years, the robustness of the robots went up a lot. So you, we saw the last game, Water versus uh, Tech United, almost the entire game five against five, which is very, very good. But it also means that if something happens, it's much, much more likely to be a severe problem yeah. because all these small things don't happen anymore. Yeah, I see. Good. In the other leagues, so the other football leagues, uh, kid size, teen size and adult size for the humanoids. And then we also have uh, the standard platform, the now robots playing and the small size league. Mm. You've been following some of these. What did you see today? Yeah, today I uh, paid special attention to the standard platform league where the nano robot, which is off the shell robot, is used uh, in a game again five against five, and the teams yeah, have a, a bot robot, and they only change the software. So it's about who's the smartest in the software. They can uh, yeah. uh, t tweak the motion, they can tweak the camera, and the, of course the strategy. The team buys the robot and only programs it. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. And what happened there, standard yeah. platform? Uh, two interesting teams. Uh, one is the Be Human team from Germany, which was really uh, outstanding and making a difference between the rest of the teams. So that's a, a team to look to forward to. Mm -hmm. And of course, as the Dutch um, with the orange shirts, <laughs> we also have a uh, Dutch, uh, Dutch participation. Dutch team, uh, yes. Yeah. And, um, it's a Dutch nano team, and yeah, you do one in their, in their pool, so they are at the top 16. There are 22 okay. teams in the nano league. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit lucky, they have a, a German student, and it really paid off because in the last seconds they scored the winning goal <laughs> in the second game. <laughs> That's a German strategy in football, score in the last seconds, yes. When you play against Germany in football, you can only be sure that you won half an hour after the, after the game. That's what they say. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. And it was an own goal by the other team. You win by drinking more beer than the Germans in, <laughs> yes. the, in the third half. Yeah. Most probably. Did you see any of the other leagues, the humanoid leagues? Yeah, I also paid special attention 
to the kid size of the humans. Uh, the smallest. Uh, no, that's the second. The, the oh, robots okay. to 120 high, and oh, there the Nimro team really uh, showed off uh, mm -hmm. the good behavior against the other teams. And mm -hmm. yeah, the, I'm looking forward to the they're playing two against two. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they still fall on the ground, but they are quickly stand up. It's really impressive to see. Yeah. Uh, they can balance quite well when they shoot, and yeah, the, the, the ball, normal ball is really rolling over the field. And, mm -hmm. uh I'm looking forward to the, uh, the games of, of tomorrow for that league. Excellent. Then we have the small size league. They're just wagons of 20 centimeters and they work together. They're controlled by one central computer so they can think as a team. Um, this was my favorite league when I was watching RoboCup games on the internet years before. This was my favorite league because of the tempo and because it was very fast. But I haven't seen such a game yet here. Do we have to wait until the stronger teams get together to see the really fast small size small size league games? Uh, of course, the, as uh, long the tournament takes, the, the better teams takes in keep in in, in the tournament. Mm -hmm. But uh, small the small size, it's really challenging from day one. Mm -hmm. They uh, practice a lot, and uh, I see a few games and really ex exciting games to see. And uh, I hope to see, uh, looking forward to see more games on Twitter tomorrow. Good, I'm going to pay, pay special attention to the small size league tomorrow, so hopefully we can show images of a very good small size move uh, tomorrow in this show. Just uh, to, to add to that for uh, the people uh, that want to come and visit us here, I uh, mostly uh, had my focus on the mid-size league today, and mm -hmm. behind me were all the other leagues, and uh, sometimes I just had to turn around for the cheers from a team that was yes. so happy that they scored a goal. And yeah. To be here and uh, and and recognize uh, that they really have the emotion to win, mm -hmm. it's, re it's really cool to see. So I really uh, yes. would like to tell people, come and see it for yourself. If the emotions rise every day like they did uh, today, then we will have uh, well, it will be on fire on Sunday, but not literally like today, just uh, the, the normal on fire. Tomorrow the football games uh, will go on. Um, the uh, uh, at home league will go on. We have the, the cleaning up at two o'clock, cleaning up event. And tomorrow I was told the rescue league is uh, nice to follow. There's a lot going on in the rescue league. So rescue league are small wagons, most, most of them with track tires. And they are used to, um, to, to locate victims and to, to get them out of disaster scenes, like after an earthquake or a burning vehicle or things like that. Maybe you can best uh, compare now with uh, the robots you often see uh, that dismantle bombs, you know? The, yeah. the, the, the bomb squad uses these robots. Mm -hmm. That's then, uh, I guess they are most resemble those kind of robots. There are also teams using drones to localize the victim and help the the, the robot on the floor to lo uh, to go to the victim. So it's really nice yes. to see. And uh, you, the, the schedule of tomorrow is really uh, awesome. Yes, that's um, that's the the first year that one team is uh, using a flying drone to to locate the cars and 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 all the victims. And I think this team is uh, Sorop Rescue, and you can see them at 20 past 10 tomorrow before, um, well, uh, in, in the morning, 20 past uh, 10. Well, maybe we can get this on live stream, but the best thing, of course, is to come over here and see the drone fly around in our tent uh, yourself. So tomorrow from 9 o'clock until uh, 5 o'clock, every 20 minutes, a new rescue team will enter the arena. There will be two teams um, there will always be two teams uh, working there, yes. And so if you want to see rescue, tomorrow is your day. Good, I think uh, that's all for us uh, today. One final question for Loy that we ask everybody. Of course, you're an at-home link, but the question that we have to ask is, will a robot team in football beat the world champion in football in the year 2050? Uh, seen, given the progression we see every year, uh, I definitely think so. It's, uh, the, the walking robots are getting better every year. Um, I, yeah, I think we're definitely going to make that still 37 years, so that's going to work. Yep. Excellent. Another one on the Yes team. Are you on the Yes team too? I was, all, I was on the... Uh, let's see what happens with the, the social aspect of the, of the competition. Oh, if we're actually going to build these robot uh, soccer <laughs> players. Oh, okay. I'm an almost optimistic person, so okay. I, I vote for against, uh, for it. So, uh. Go yes team, looking forward to 2050. If you are in the neighborhood, don't hesitate to visit us. There's free entrance and there's a lot going on tomorrow, even more on Saturday and of course Sunday will be our special day. We hope to see you here and we see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock for this uh, Today at RoboCup.
zijn hartstikke enthousiast. Um, en het is ook nog heel erg leerzaam.